Hey, Quan, have you ever photographed shrimp before? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope that intro gave you just a little taste of the photo shoot we'll discuss today, which was a five-day shoot. And I believe if my memory is right, we went to seven different locations. But this shoot had a little bit of everything. We were indoors, we were outdoors, we were um, photographing at night. During the day, I was using constant light and strobe light. Probably 95% of the time it was gelled. So let's get to it. If I'm being truly honest, it's going to be tough to cover everything we did over five days on this campaign shoot and keep it within a respectable amount of time here on YouTube. So I'm going to kind of just blaze through uh, as much as I can. Uh, so if you've got questions or comments, you know, please feel free to leave those down below and I'll do my best to answer those if there's something um, specific that uh, you might want me to, to hit on. So. With that being said, uh, let's just start kind of with the the gear, the tools that I used on this photo shoot. Uh, and so with the camera, I had uh, two of the Canon R5s on this uh, shoot. I used the 24 to 70 28 and the 70 to 200 28. And uh, a lot of these setups were using constant light, so. I was having to juggle you know, wide aperture uh, with longer, uh, slower shutter speeds and then higher ISO to um, kind of dial in an exposure that would do what we wanted it to do as far as like noise level, um, no motion, you know, keeping a, a sharpness and uh, keeping a depth of field that was respectable. And it's, so a lot of times I was at a pretty slow shutter speed and it just, it's kind of ironic that my last video was covering the, the new R5C, which they've removed the IBIS in. <laughs> so this would have been one of those shoots where that camera probably would not be the best one to bring on. And it's good that I have the, the R5 uh, with the IBIS uh, in this scenario. Um, but I thought it, that was just kind of funny that the first video after uh, one that I was talking about that aspect of the new camera was one that definitely made uh, use of the IBIS in the camera. Uh, another tool, before we get into this next tool, which are these Nanlites right here, let me talk about the creative direction behind uh, this shoot and kind of the reason why we were doing what we were doing. And it was for a new lottery game campaign here that I was hired to uh, help promote. And, and it was called uh, Cash Pop. And this sign right here, and I guess the design of the sign, the kind of neon look and stuff was the, the backbone for this campaign. So on the video portion, they have a character that uh, mimics uh, like the neon glow and is present throughout the video which I will link those um, videos uh, down um, below. So if you're interested, you can see the video portion of this campaign and how it kind of relates back to the still portion that I was in control of and how those kind of mesh together, which brings me to another point of um, this, this shoot, this uh, campaign, is that it, uh, while I was doing the stills, you know, it was the video team. There was a full video there. There was a special effects team. Uh, I, my, me and my team were there. Uh, there was the creative team from the lottery and the creative team from the ad agency, which kind of oversees everything going on. So really, really cool uh, situation when you can get around a bunch of like-minded creative individuals. We're all striving for the same goal. And it's, it's, just, it's just one of those fun, uh, I guess, cases or fun scenarios where 
uh, just a lot of you know creative troubleshooting on location. Just we we had everything thrown at us, from, as I mentioned um, in the the intro. Indoors, outdoors, constant light, strobes. Uh, you know they had their video stuff going. I had my still stuff going. We had to integrate special effects um, where you know everything would make sense in the video and in the stills. And uh, you know while staying in the parameters of the creative direction. Uh, and I just can't express that <laughs> too much that when you just get with a, with a bunch of people and, and we're all striving for the same goal, helping each other out, it's just a really, really unique and fun environment. Uh, even if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and, and you're ready to go to bed. So, uh, and we had that on several nights. As they shoot that, some nights we went to three, four in the morning um, to get what we needed to get. So, but let's move from, uh, so, you know, we're talking about the career direction there. And so how was I going to uh, produce, you know, a light on the stills and colored light to help with our, uh, direction and are with our creative direction and so I use these uh, Nanlite Pibo tubes and this is the first time that I've used these on a shoot and uh, so we had the, the pink color and these allow you to dial in uh, to whatever um, color on the RGB spectrum that you might want to use and so they were the perfect tool to uh, to do what we needed to do and we had the pink color and Kind of in one of our pre-production meetings, we determined that you know we needed obviously a kind of a complementary color, so we we came up with the uh, blue color that we could dial in based off of the HSI number on the back of these uh, tubes. So uh, it really made made our jobs possible in in an easy way that would, a couple years ago would probably not have been possible, and so. I used uh, the two foot versions. There are two, two different lengths of these that I use, uh, and they've got little smaller ones too. But so I use the two foot version like I've got here, and then a four foot version, and that one was just based off of location, uh, where I could fit these lights, and how much light I needed. And a lot of times I needed as much as possible, so I made use of these brackets where I could stick, uh, like just like these right here, where I could stick two tubes next to each other, uh, sync up the uh, colors, and place them where I needed them on uh, the certain s set. Uh, and that being said too, so I was there doing two different things. I was there to create uh, like hero images from uh, the different locations during this campaign that would relate to the video portion uh, of the commercial. And that was the process of where we would set up a light that would represent our character based off of the sign here. And they would be placed in a certain scene. And so this light would then project the pink light that would be coming off of him in the final image. But then that would give, it would give, cast off the, that light on our subjects which would then give us a realistic rendition, I mean, you know, had that character been sitting there or standing there or what have you, and based off of the scene. So in those situations, I was locking off my camera on a tripod and shooting multiple exposures where we would use one of these lights in different positions in that scene to give off that radiance um, of where the character was so we would not have to fake that in post. So we did that for, uh, I guess, probably five different situations, I believe. And then outside of that, uh, I was tasked with capturing just images with this kind of pink and blue glow that then they would use in, in different, like on social and point of purchase uh, in different areas um, to help promote this game and campaign. And that's where we would then uh, set up the lights like you saw in the um, intro video on the beach where we had the scene where our two of our talent were walking along the beach and um, we had the, the neon, the Pabo tubes uh, set up there um, with the different colors to kind of create that full scene. Uh, and that brings me to another kind of um, point in, within that scenario. And uh, when you're working with constant light and you're, you're especially at night and you're not wanting to crank your ISO through the ceiling, you are going to be working at a slower shutter speed because uh, you only want to open the camera up. You know, you can go to 2.8, obviously, but I was trying to 
to give myself a little more latitude. So I was probably around three, five or, or so, uh, just because the talent, they're on different planes of focus and I want to keep everything sharp. Uh, so then that limits you on your shutter speed if you're going to try to keep the ISO ceiling down to a certain level. So then I'm, I'm having to coach up my talent on set. Not necessarily probably coaching them up, but I'm just giving them the information. I'm, I'm letting them in uh, to what I'm trying to do uh, with my tools here and how I'm limited and then letting them know how they can help me out. And in that case, what I'm doing is trying to catch them in a movement that looks natural, so, but I'm not able to you know, capture it as it, you know, have them just walk through the scene. I can't, can't do that. And so what I was doing is having them pause as they were almost like mid-step or in a motion and capture it that way to so where they were fairly still, but it looked like they were moving. And it kind of gave them a reason to, you know, act in, in this type of scene. Uh, and, you know, it just made it a little more interactive uh, between uh, me as a photographer and the talent, and then everyone else that was helping with the lighting and creative direction. So just a another technique that you have to employ uh, when you have someone in front of your camera and you're, you're restricted by your parameters. and. Uh, I think as long as you communicate that, it's um, usually well received and, uh, and it's a lot of fun too when it works out. Uh, and one last kind of part of that with these new cameras, the shutters are so silent in here that uh, you can probably relate if someone's taking your picture with the phone and you just have no idea when they're pu pushing the shutter button because there's not a noise. Uh, and so <laughs> to alleviate that with my uh, talent, I would then let them know, uh, you know when I was taking the actual pictures and then when we could reset and start again. And so then they you know, had an idea of verbal. We obviously weren't recording audio, so then they had uh, a cue, an audible cue of when I was taking those shots. So then that helped them do what they were doing on their end. So just another aspect of, of figuring out how to make things work on location. Uh, and, and you know work your way through that problem solve certain situations. So uh, back to the lighting with the different colors, I, what I realized uh, I did some pre-production uh, kind of shoots or just some pre-shoots to test out these lights. And it quickly became apparent that pink was a better edge or kind of rim light uh, than a frontal skin. Um, you know, fate, well, basically when you, when you shine pink on someone's skin, it just kind of flattens out, obviously turns them really pink. It's hard to keep that in exposure and you lose a lot of detail and dimension of the face. Whereas the blue for me was working better kind of in front of the talent. Uh, and so when I would set the lights up and the different settings, I would, and based off of their movement, I would do my best on these to have um, the pink where it was you know, edging them out and then the blue was kind of working the, the rest of, you know, filling in the rest of um, the frame. So that was just another aspect of kind of the colors and how they, you know, performed on that surface um, of my talent. Now, there were also some situations where uh, I had to freeze certain action aspects of an image and then that's where I employed uh, strobes and then I would gel the strobes so then they would match my constant lighting uh, to as best as I, I could with the gels here. And there was like a scene uh, where our character was jumping into a pool and I needed to freeze the, the water spray. And so I had to use a strobe there. And then we had another setup where our talent was actually running and it was, it, I had to set up basically a strobe there to freeze their action. Uh, so we weren't getting complete motion blur there. So now that was another aspect uh, of the shoot where I was having to combine strobe uh, along with some constant lighting that was adding extra color into the scene. So then I'm to, in order to do that, um, uh, keeping my shutter speed uh, slow enough to where the color on these constant lights could kind of burn in. Uh, but then I would have to adjust my lights, my strobe lights to where I wasn't, you know, uh, overpowering the scene with those. So a lot of math going on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, um, my, my head didn't melt during some, some of these uh, scenarios. And then finally, uh, 
as you could see uh, from the intro there, um, we actually took the sign on location, used it uh, during some of those setups, like you saw that same one that I've been referring to with, with my uh, talent walking. The sign was actually there uh, next to the dune. So just going into this shoot, I just kind of pitched the idea of why don't we, because I knew we were going to have a couple of these, why don't we actually incorporate that into our frames, into our scenes, uh, naturally and not just do it in post. Uh, and so that was well received and we ended up doing that, which was another cool element. Plus the sign actually uh, functioned as a source of light, which was made the scenes even more natural. And then we used the sign by itself in certain scenarios uh, to, you know, where it was the character, the, the hero of the shots, that then they, um, it just gives them uh, more material uh, to work with uh, when they're, you know, pushing this campaign out. So we had some that actually, uh, I showed one in the intro, I'll show it again, uh, which just on set and having this sign there was, this would not have occurred to me, um, what I'm trying to say, is that the exposure of that sign was so much brighter than the surrounding light or the scene around the sign that, and camera raw, I'd have to bring the exposure down and then overlay that over uh, the scene. So yeah, two layers. But then it occurred to me that I could basically just turn that one layer off and on uh, and then create an animation that then they could also use in certain situations to where it looked like the sign was flashing on and off and uh, just that's just more content for them to use, and it kind of you know mimics like a sign, like a flashing sign, and um, like a convenience store or something, um, if you will. Uh, but that would not have occurred to me had we uh, not had the signs on location. And then uh, I guess one of the final setups, final shots that uh, I used with the sign was here in the studio, and this kind of became almost like the the book cover, the showcase piece for. Uh, this cash pop campaign. Um, and so we gathered up palm uh, leaves during the, the campaign and then brought those uh, in here. And I basically built out a background and then placed the sign in front of that background and did some shots there to create kind of a, just a cover image um, for everything um, that was encompassed, I guess, within this, this creative campaign. So a lot of, a lot of different things going on here. Uh, when it goes back to like the retouching on the, the scenes um, from that match the video that I was talking about where our character was there, uh, the special effects crew, uh, they created the character and then uh, sent the character to me. So then I was able to Photoshop the scene together with the character. So that was just another uh, dimension of communication we had. Um, you know, really cool to uh, to work uh, and collaborate with another crew on the post work there, kind of get their input, get kind of their thoughts, because they had to build this character from scratch that if you watch the videos that I'll link below. Uh, and so we took that uh, framework uh, from the video portion and then brought it into the stills. And that's where, as I mentioned, we were able to kind of incorporate all that. So just trying to run through everything that I think of here on the top of my head. But I think that, you know, I, I think that's probably long enough um, for uh, what we're doing here today. If, like I said, if you've got any more comments or questions, uh, please feel free to leave those down below. If you want to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the bell so YouTube will let you know when I'm here. Share these videos if you've got some photography friends that you feel can uh, benefit from watching these. Plus it, it helps me, the more people subscribe here, uh, the more it helps me to create these videos. Uh, in the meantime, you can also find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Twitter. Y'all, uh, please stay safe and healthy out there. And I'll be here again sometime in the near future with the next one. Thank you.